Robinson's never seasick. How does he know? He's been on a boat often, at Bodner. There's a button off this shirt. Oh dear, put it down there. I'll sew it on in a minute. You won't forget to turn the gas and the electric light off at the main before you go tomorrow, will you, Shirley? No, and I'd better hide the silver. Where? Bottom of the clothes basket. Same as Mum does her garnet ring when she does the pictures. I wonder what the time is. Has Mr. Wilson gone by yet? Yes, a long time ago. And he's taken home a chicken. That's twice in a fortnight. Oh, that's nothing to what we'll have once we're on board. Mr. Robinson said there are as many as 20 dishes to choose from at every meal. Mm, you'll want seven stomachs, won't you, like a camel? Oh, drat, there goes that telephone again. Oh, Peter can answer it. Peter! 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 Yes, what is it? Telephone. Is it for me? Answer it and you'll see. Yes, but it might... Oh, look, now it's stopped. You know how long it takes to start all over again. Every time I just... This is the most extraordinary house. Hello. Oh, y yes, Pepper. No, Pepper. Uh, Pepper, I was just leaving as you rang. That's what you always say. Well, you know how long it takes to start galloping, Gertie. You don't want to walk home, do you? Might just as well. It'd be much quicker. Oh, Pepper, have a heart. It only broke down twice. Uh, Pepper, look. Look, you go along and get the court, and I'll be along in no time. I shouldn't bother. All the best courts will be gone. You don't really want to play with me anyway. Oh, Pepper, of course I do. You know I do. Honest? Yes, honest. You know me. I do. That's the trouble. Peter. Yes, Pepper. Do you really love me? Pepper, of course I do. Then say so. Well, I, I've just said so. No. No, say it properly. But look, Pepper, I, I can't now. I. Oh, gosh, look, I I'll tell you when I see you. Pepper! Pepper! Women. Why do you keep on calling that girl Pepper? Because she's hot stuff. Peter! I wish you wouldn't say things like that. It's not nice. Have you remembered to water your father's begonia? Oh, no, I forgot. Well, you better do it before he comes home. Well, I haven't got a minute now. Oh, that's all right. I'll just tip the washing up water over it. Peter. Pepper's waiting for me. Oh, dear, there's that wretched dog in the garden again. Shh! Naughty dog, go away! Shh! Mr. Robinson will be annoyed. He spent all last evening mending the hole in the fence. Made a good job of it, too. It took her over all the afternoon to break through. Sandbird lotion, insect powder, 
Collar belt, gate book, first aid set. Do we need all these things, dear? Well, Wilson says so, and he ought to know. Why should he? Well, he's a regular cosmopolitan. I mean, he's been on at least two cruises, and he's been to Paris twice. He's given me quite a number of useful hints. Well, I'm not sure that I should care to take hints from Mrs. Wilson. She's the sort of woman who uses mats instead of a tablecloth. Yes, I know what I mean. Yes. What's in the big parcel, dear? Ah, that'll be telling. Wonderful club, this mother. Loses one minute per week. Never more, never less. I suppose nobody thought of watering May Begonia. Why, yes, dear, of course they did. Best rose on the 840 again this morning, mother. Was it, dear? Can I help? It's awfully kind of you. Uh, seems to be the trouble. I don't know. It just seems to have sort of stopped. Well, perhaps uh, I could fix it. If not, I could always give you a tow. Well, Mother, how's the pecking going? You haven't forgotten my little screwdriver? Well, dear, I didn't think you'd need one on a cruise. Now, that's just where you're wrong, Mother. You remember what happened that time I forgot my screwdriver and you got locked in the, um... Well, when you got locked in. Oh, Charles, can't we forget that? Well, it was most embarrassing. The whole Sherabong was waiting. Who's it from? Mrs. Fripp from Bogner. Someone's let her down and she wants to know if we want our old rooms. Oh, poor old Bogner. Fancy going back to Bogner now. Charles, dear, where exactly is the Mediterranean? Oh, well, um, we know the Bay of Biscay. Oh, you know the old song, in the bay, in the bay. Anyway, you go across that, you take the first on the left. First on the left again, and there you are in the Mediterranean. Oh, on the left? I wish I could speak the language. Oh, it'll be all right. Foreigners always understand English if you speak loudly enough. How's it going? Nelly Finney, you know, your plugs are absolutely filthy. They'll be all right for a day or two. You know, it's been awfully sweet of you. Nothing, really. Oh, but it is. I don't know what I should have done if you hadn't come along. Now I've made you awfully late. And very dirty. <laughs> well, it's only just going to have a knock-up at tennis with Pepper. Pepper? Uh, a friend of mine. Girl? <laughs> no, no, no. Boy. Don't tell me your name's Salt. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Peter. Peter Robinson. But uh, you just call me Peter, then it doesn't sound so much like a shop. I'm Faye. Hello. Faye. Hello. Peter? <laughs> you won't forget to lock everything up after we've gone, will you, Shirley? Leave it to me. And I'm hiding the silver as usual. Oh, I don't think I'd do that. We never found the teaspoons from last year, you know. I thought I'd give you a coffee in the Crown Derby as it's your last evening. Oh, look at me talking about last evenings as though he wasn't coming back. But as Mum says to me yesterday, do all you can for him, sure. She says, who knows, you may never see him again. A proper little ray of sunshine, eh? She always was one to see the funny side. As she says, you never know when people go on them boats. I don't suppose if the truth were known, when half of them ever gets back. An optimist? No, she's chapel. Eh? She's seen three coffins in her teacup lately. Oh, she's very physical, you know. There's three of them going on this trip, sure, she says. That's one for each of them. Oh, thank you very much. That's cheered me up a lot. in that parcel, Charlie. Never you mind. A little surprise. A little surprise. <laughs> it's the Wilsons. Do you want me to say you're out? No, they'd know it wasn't true. You'd better put on some more coffee, Shirley. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Robinson. We just thought we'd pop over to say goodbye. Oh, hello, hello, Mrs. Robinson. Hello. This time tomorrow you'll be rocking in the cradle of the deep, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Got your seasick remedies? Oh, Father and I are very good sailors. When we go fishing at Bosna, it's often quite choppy. Do sit down. Oh, oh thank you very much. Ah, would you wait till you get into the bay, my dear? The first time I went, I simply nearly passed out, didn't I, Tommy King? You certainly did, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> the poor darling had to pour champagne down me every half hour. 
The doctor said I'd have gone otherwise. Yes, champagne's the only thing when you're feeling quizby, you know. <laughs> Mother! Mother! Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, good evening, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Robbie. Uh, good evening, Mr. Wilson. Oh, well, uh, I do forgive you. Uh, Not at all. Uh, oh, Father, really? Mother, take my brown shoes with the rubber soles. You know, the ones I bought at Bognor last year. I do wish people would leave things alone. Well, where did you put them, dear? Well, I always put them at the bottom of my wardrobe and somebody's tidied them up. Why should anyone touch them? Well, that's what I want to know, dear. Why should they? That's the whole point, surely. Are you sure they're not in the book Yes, cupboard, dear, I dear. am sure. If they were, they shouldn't be. You know, I never keep them in the book cupboard. Right. 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 I expect Peter's awfully disappointed he's not going with you. Yes, poor boy. It's going to be so dull for him while we're away. I'm so glad you're taking Joan. Such a chance for her. You must be prepared to lose her, you know. I wouldn't trust a man with his grandmother on the boat deck at night. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss me, Hardy, eh? Why, <laughs> what are you doing, Mother? Oh, it's lovely, dear. Not too, um, fast? Oh, no, dear. What do you think, Wilson, old fellow? Well, personally, old man, I always put the old bod into shorts and bear the manly buzz to the sea breezes. Well, that depends on the bod and the buzz. How far are you going, Robbie, old man? As far as Athens, I believe. Uh -huh. Ever been there on one of your cruises? No, no, Athens never particularly attracted us. No, we met some awfully nice people from Ealing. No, dear, Acton. Oh, Acton, yes. And they quite put us off Athens, didn't they, Tommy Yes, yeah, so it was nothing but old buildings. Not a golf course in the place. Well, Mother and I are rather partial to the antique, aren't we, Mother? I always think old buildings date so, don't you, dear? Mm. And they couldn't get a cup of English tea anywhere. All the food was foreign. Oh, dear. I do hope we haven't chosen the wrong cruise. Yes, I hope so, too. Well, we must be going. I only just popped in to wish you bon voyage. Don't forget to drop me a card, old man. Oh, by the way, Wilson, old fellow. Well, where are we? That dog of yours. My begonia, you know. Oh, well, Rover. Oh, he's a perfect lamb. Wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, I don't suppose he would, but he's very fond of sniffing around my begonia. And it's a praise one, you know. Don't you worry, old man. If he roots it up, I'll stick it back in the ground myself. Ha, ha, ha. Cheerio. <laughs> You'd better undo the tow rope. Yes. Oh, yes. What again? That's nine times this week, isn't it? See you Tuesday. Mommy! Daddy! Oh, Daddy. Oh. Is anything the matter, dear? Hmm. I've got something tremendous to tell you. Oh, darlings, I do hope you'll be pleased, but I'm afraid I've just got myself engaged. Sure. sure. But, but, but who is it? Not the young man with the long hair who was always taking you to the ballet. Of course not. It's Michael Carradine. Which one is that? Do I know him? Yes, you do, Daddy. He's been here twice. A dark young man, dear. Wore a very nice blue suit. Oh, I remember. Kept calling me sir. Ate all the cucumber sandwiches. I'm afraid I've got rather a shock for you. I shan't be able to go on the cruise now. Not, Not go. go? Well, do be reasonable. Michael's mother naturally wants to meet me at once, and, well, I couldn't leave Michael straight away like that. But, Joni, dear, couldn't you have waited until after the cruise? Daddy set his heart on having you with us. Why not take Peter? Well, yes, I, I suppose we could do that. I'll go and call him. Peter! Peter! What is it? Daddy wants you. Oh, well, always interfering me. I'm when what is it, Dad? Well, my boy, how would you like a nice little trip on the brainy? Who, me? Yes. Joey's changed her mind at the last moment. She... Well, she doesn't want to come. Oh, Daddy, you know it isn't You see, dear, she's engaged. Who to? Michael Carradine. Oh, I know. Bloke who drives a green MG. Jolly good. The point is, Peter, can you take my place on the cruise? Well, I don't say as I can go on a cruise tomorrow, you see. I've got a date to play tennis on Tuesday. Tennis? Oh, really? Oh, well, I suppose I might as well chuck him money down the drain. Oh, you've upset your father, and now you'll start weeding in that lovely new suit. You might go, Peter. You know how dreary they feel if they have to go away by themselves. What am I going to do all day long sitting on a boat? Well, you could pretend to like it. 
You know what a kick they get out of giving us treats. Oh, parents are a responsibility. Dad? Well? Look, it's only that I promised I'd play this bloke on Tuesday. I don't mind coming at all. So you're keen. In fact, I'm frightfully keen. Oh, you are? Yes, I am, really. When do we get back? Oh, I just remembered. Joan sharing a cabin with three other girls. Doesn't that idea appeal to you, Peter? No, not just now. Oh, well, Peter, in that case, you'd better ring up the shipping company and see if they've got another berth. All right, I'll see what I can do. I don't know why Joan had to go and get engaged, I'm sure. Well, dear, we must just take it that we're not losing a daughter, but gaining a son. Well, I've got one son, my dear. That's quite enough to be going on with. Hello, yes? Oh, is that Pepper? No, it's Faye. Do I sound like Pepper? <laughs> Good Lord, no, of course not. I thought you said Pepper was a boy. Oh, yes, yes, so she is. I, I mean, so he is. He he's a big fellow. He wears glasses. Look, Peter, you know I said I was going out tomorrow. Yes? Well, the people I was going out with have just rung up to put it off. So if you'd still like to play tennis... Oh, gosh, that's wonderful. Of course, I'll be alone. Still, if you don't mind playing singles. Oh, no, of course not. I, I think singles are much faster than doubles, don't you? Much. Then you'll come? Oh, yes, of course. You try and stop me. Oh. What's wrong? Anything the matter? Uh, no, I, I was supposed to go to Athens, that's all, but, but don't you worry. I'll fix it. Well, goodbye, Faye. Goodbye, Peter. All right, <laughs> goodbye. Is that the White Triangle Shipping Company? I'm speaking for Mr. Charles Robinson. Yes. He's got three tickets booked for the Mediterranean cruise tomorrow. Only one of the party, Miss Joan Robinson, can't go. So is it possible for somebody else to use her ticket? Her brother? Uh, no, she was sharing a cabin with three other girls. <laughs> no, no, it'd have to be another cabin. Uh, there is no other cabin. No chance for birth anywhere. Not even a hammock in the steerage. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, what a pity. Oh, well, if you can't, you can't. All right, thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, Peter? It's no good, Dad. They're absolutely full up. Well, no more boats at all? No, nope, none at all. Oh, well, I suppose my money be wasted, that's all. I'm very sorry, too, but, um... I better go and wash my hands. But, of course, Michael, they were absolutely thrilled. Whoop, whoop! Oh, shut up. No, not you, precious. That was Peter trying to be funny. Can you come round now? Oh, but you must see Daddy before he goes. Oh, never mind. You can drop in on your way to the station. Don't be long, darling. <laughs> Sweetheart. Bye-bye. Hello, yes? Oh, hold on a minute, will you? Peter, telephone! Who is it? The girlfriend. Hello, Faye. I... I thought it was Faye. Oh, no. Who and who's Faye? Pepper, look, I... I, I, I when you're too busy to come out with me, Pe because if she is, then you can tell her what's to go with Faye. Pepper, Faye it was a joke. Uh, uh, what? What a lovely boat. Ship, dear. Ah, oh, ship. I thought it might be rather a good idea to get one or two of them written before we went away. You never know what's going to happen on these cruises. It'd be nice to mark our cabin with a cross. I've done that. Now, then what shall I put? Couldn't we say, arrived safely? They're bound to want to know. Well, we can't very well put that, dear, because we're not arriving anywhere. We're only cruising. Besides, I think something more original than that. Yes, I know. Yes. Having a lovely time. How we wish you were uh, with us. Oh, very nice, dear. Who are you sending that to? Well, I thought June. Now you write one to Aunt Edith. And Peter. Yes, and you might write one to the Wilsons. But I should vary it a bit for them. Not quite so intimate. Something like, um, everything okay, don't you wish you were here? Yes, 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 yes. And we'll send it from Athens. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, how lovely to see you. Yes, it must be at least two hours. He's just kissing her. Oh, come away, Mother, come away. Oh, come along. Just a minute, darling. I've, um, I've got something to show you. Uh, Oh, Michael, it's lovely. Like it? 
must have cost you pounds. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, it belonged to my grandmother. Oh. Never mind. I think it's lovely. I thought I'd like you to have it before I, uh, went to Manchester, just to keep you out of harm's way, because now I've got you, I must hold on to you, mustn't I? You won't get rid of me now. I cling. <laughs> Come on. Well, I feel rather awkward. I hardly know them. I doubt if your father even remembers who I am. Silly. Well, Michael, my boy. How are you, sir? <laughs> Michael, my dear boy. Uh, well, may I, Mrs. Robinson? <laughs> We're in a terrible muddle. You must excuse us. Well, I'm afraid you'll think me rather rude. I've got to go in two minutes and catch a train for Manchester. Manchester? Oh. At this time of night? Yes. Silly, isn't it? Yes. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> well, I, uh, I feel we've so much to say to one another, so it's unfortunate you should be going away tomorrow. Well, supposing we put it this way. That you chose rather an unfortunate time to spring this bombshell on us. Oh, yes. I, I suppose... Uh, Yes. 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 Look what Michael's uh, given me. Oh, I'm afraid you've been rather extravagant, my boy. Oh, I didn't buy it, sir. Oh? No, it's, it's all right. I, I didn't steal it. <laughs> oh, I see. You, uh, you found it. Yes. No, uh, it belonged to my grandmother. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Joan, dear, you haven't given the poor boy anything to eat. Mommy, mm. darling, he's in a hurry. He's got a train to catch. A train? Mm. Oh, I see. Oh, well, you can't wait. No, I really can't, Mrs. Robinson. Goodbye. Have a lovely time. I'll write to you, sir, may yes, I? Goodbye, my boy. I'm sorry it's been such a short visit. Yeah. I'd like to show you around my garden. Yes, I'd have loved that. Maybe Goody, I was a fair champion, isn't it, Mother? Am I to write Oh. Ah. Good man up to Manchester. Yes, I will, sir. Don't forget your umbrella. <laughs> Mother, I'm just going off to the Eversheds. All right, dear. I'll see you before you go. I've got the list ready, Mother. What list, dear? Well, the list of things to be done while we're away. Now, just see if I've left anything out, will you? <clears throat> wine clock Sunday nights. Note, don't wine strike till Thursdays. Must they be wound on different days, dear? Well, my dear old father always did it that way, and what was good enough for my father is quite good enough for me. Put clock forward one minute per week. Water begonia daily. Weed weekly. Cover with large flower pot if windy. Keep Wilson's dog out of garden. Mend holes in fence as dog makes them. I think it's all we do. Charles, I don't like the idea of Joan staying in this house by herself. Uh, not now she's engaged. I mean, uh, not in an empty house with Peter staying over with the Eversheds. Ah, uh, that's your Aunt Edith. Well, she did suggest that Joan might as well stay with her. And now she's engaged, I mean. Oh, Joan won't do that, not if I know her. Huh? Now, Charles, you've got to be firm with Joan about this. You're always so weak with Joan. Me? Yes, she rides slipshod over you. Isn't it roughshod? I always say slipshod. Oh, you do? Morning, everyone. Morning, Jody. Morning, dear. Morning, Miss Chum. Morning, Shelley. I'll go and lock the bags, Charles. Oh. <clears throat> Jody, I, um, I rather want to talk to you. Hope it won't take long, Daddy. I haven't got much time. With reference to this trip of ours, don't you think it'd be a good idea if you were to stay with your Aunt Edith while we're away? She surely would be on holiday and Peter would be at Eversheds and, uh, well, you'd be all alone, you see. I know, and I shall love it. Michael can come to dinner every night and I can cook it and he can help with the washing up. We can pretend it's our house and that we're really married. Oh, it'll be heavenly. Oh, yes, I, um, hmm. Still, you know, I don't think that'd be very advisable, old girl. You see, it might give people ideas. What sort of ideas? Oh, I don't know, um, sort of, um, well, uh, didn't your mother ever tell you anything about, um, anything? The facts of life? Uh, yes, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, yes, yes. I should think not. Now, Daddy, when it comes to the facts of life, I should think I could tell Mummy a thing or two. Oh, you could? Hmm. So, you know, anyway, you do, you see what I mean. I mean, you, you will stay with Aunt Edith. No, Daddy. And in any case, I shall only be here half the time. Michael's mother wants me to spend the weekends with them. Well, of course, we know you wouldn't do anything silly. I mean, anything your mother wouldn't like. What are you worrying about, then? But, Ducky, I'm not worrying. It isn't me, it's your mother. Oh, Daddy, you've been a perfectly marvellous father to me. You brought me up simply beautifully. But now let me be and don't natter at me. Michael will be shocked if I tell him your beastly ideas about empty houses. And I shall stay here. So don't worry anymore. Or let Mummy. Promise? All right. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, my pet. Mm. And have a wonderful time.
I say, Mother, look at that. Dear old Bogner. <laughs> this time last year, we were just out there, weren't we? Yes. Funny I should have heard from Mrs. Fripp yesterday. You know, Mother, I always liked Mrs. Fripp. She made us very comfortable, didn't she? Yes. And Bogner's so much nearer than the Mediterranean, too. In case anything happened at home, I mean. Mother, I suppose it wouldn't do to call it off. What? The cruise? Well, I don't see why not. I dare say I could get some of the passage money back. But what would people say? I mean, if we suddenly changed our minds and just went to Bogner. Why need they ever know? We needn't turn into anyone. Well, uh, no, Charles. We've made up our minds to go on a cruise, and we'll go on a cruise. Oh. I had a postcard from Daddy today. What's the news? Just called at Lisbon. Having a lovely time, how we wish you were with us. That all? Well, I expect they were too busy to write much. It's a lovely picture of their boat, though. Their cabin's marked with a cross. Oh, yes. That's original. <laughs> you know, it must be a wonderful experience for them. I can just imagine Daddy stepping out into the great mysterious desert with nobody in sight and nothing to be seen but miles and miles and miles of sand. Fine ship out there, Mother. Looks as if it might be a pleasure cruise liner. Are you sorry we didn't go, Charles? Good heavens, no. Give me Bogner any time. I'm not so keen on those foreign parts. How can you tell, dear, if you've never been? Well, I just know, that's all. Give me good old England every time. You're sure you're not saying that just because you are English? Certainly not. I'd say just the same if I was a Dutchman. Oh. Charles, I do hope the children are all right. Yes. Uh, Mr. Robinson? Yes, that's right. Uh, Madam is expecting you. Oh. Uh, may I take your thing, sir? Uh, yes. Come. You come this way, sir, please. Robinson. Hello, Peter. Do sit down. I'm so glad you could come. <laughs> yes, so am I. Cigarette? Yes, but uh, no, thank you. It's bad for my wind. Aren't you going to give me a light? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, worth the... Yes. <laughs> Warm, isn't it? Is it? I hadn't noticed. I'll get you a drink to cool you off. Oh, not just now, thank you. No? I, I'd rather have one when we finish playing, if you don't mind. If I have one before, then uh, I always get the collie wobbles. Would you be very upset if we don't play? Not if you don't want to, no. <laughs> I'm feeling awfully lazy. I can think of much nicer things to do indoors. Can't you? Yes. Useful present, I call that, isn't you? Nice of my Uncle Ambrose to send it so early, wasn't it? Yes. Wish it wasn't green, though. Oh, why? What does that matter? Green's my unlucky colour. No one in my family ever gives me anything green. If they do, I instantly give it away again before the spell has time to work. Oh, Lord, I hope they're not going to give Uncle Ambrose his present away. It's quite a good one. Of course it is, dear. Uncle Ambrose gave it. 
Well, Uncle Ambrose always does give good presents, you know. So you've told me. Can you open the wine? Yes, if you give me a corkscrew. <laughs> Look out, don't shake it. <laughs> it isn't medicine. It'll taste like it if it's the stuff I had when I came to dinner with your mother. Good Lord, and she got out some of the best burgundy. Well, I didn't like it half as much as the stuff Mummy buys in the high street. You know, the white wine she got the time you came. Sorry, don't call it wine. It tastes like the residue from tin pears. <laughs> oh, Michael. Mummy would be upset if she knew. She went all the way down to the grocer's to choose a bottle with a nice label. Well, it certainly had a wonderful label, darling. Uh, we, uh, we don't sit on the floor, do we? What's wrong with the floor? Oh, nothing. I, I'm not sure that I'm sufficiently upholstered to enjoy it. <laughs> Isn't it fun having meals like this? I can't understand why people make such a fuss about sitting up to tables and having proper plates. Well, there are things to be said for the conventional meal. This is a long way from your plate to your mouth. <clears throat> you have to bend over so far that half your food falls out as fast as you get it in. Oh, darling, why must you spoil everything by grumbling? I think this is simply perfect. <clears throat> What's the matter now? Just a touch of paralysis, darling. You know, this floor on my behind doesn't seem to see eye to eye. Perhaps if I sat on one hip. Now you're <coughs> just trying to be awkward like Daddy is on a picnic. No, no, darling, I'm loving it. <coughs> I mean, this isn't going to develop into a habit, is it? I mean, we uh, are going to have tables in our own home, aren't we? Of course we are, silly. Oh, that's a relief. I don't know we're going to lie on couches like the ancient Romans. I think I'll just kneel up for a bit now, if you don't mind. I know what's the matter with you. You want a drink. Pass your cup. No, now that I cannot stop. What's the matter? No, I'll not drink my grandfather's claret out of a Baker Light mug. Oh, don't be silly. How can it possibly matter? Oh, darling, of course it matters. Now, Michael, that is sheer affectation. If it's the same claret, it'll taste the same, whatever you darling, drink it out of. Darling, no use arguing for this. Any subject upon which your family is abysmally ignorant is that of wine. I'm going to get a glass for this if it's my last act. Oh, you're going to be so fussy, I'll get it. Oh! It tastes better out of Marks and Spencer's or Woolworth's. I fancy we have both. Will this do? No, that's a port glass, darling. You don't drink claret from a port glass, you know. Oh! Oh, that was a silly thing to do, wasn't it? You've done nothing but try to spoil things ever since you came here. Who, me? What have I done? Everything I've done has been wrong, and you've tried to look as uncomfortable as you can. Um, You're absolutely hateful. Well, I'm going to bed, and you can go to your mother's by yourself. Joan! Joan, darling! Martin. Uh, good evening, sir. Look after these for me, will you? Yes, sir. Don't worry, I'll show myself in. Oh, Peter, you made me jump. That was the idea. Was it? You know what I mean. I'm not so sure that I do. Turn off the radio, darling. Nice number. Could we leave it on? Do you like music? All we Robinsons are mad about it. Brings out the primitive, savage side of our nature. Really? Well, in that case, leave it on. Okay. If music be the food of love, play on. You know, Mother, Bogner takes a lot of beating. Yes, dear. I've just been thinking. This is the first holiday we've spent alone together since we had the children. Over 20 years. So it is. Almost like a second honeymoon, isn't it? Sure. No, dear, I mean it. It really is quite exciting. Then you haven't found it dull. I mean, you wouldn't find it more exciting to be here with someone quite fresh. Someone younger. But with a stranger? Well, I shouldn't know what to talk to her about. No, dear. You could hardly talk to her about bone manure and Freud's fertilizer as you do to me. Now, Mother, how can you say I talk about Freud's fertilizer? 
In the sweet pea season? I'm sure I don't. As a matter of fact, I always use clays. But I suppose I am rather engrossed in the garden. Do I ever bore you, Mother? No, Charles, never for a minute. Well, I can say the same, my dear. You're the most restful companion. If there's one thing I've always hated, it's an intelligent woman. Oh, Charles, that is sweet of you. Listen. Gosh, 11 o'clock already. Have to go. You're always wanting to rush off just when we're comfortable. Not wanting to, it's having to. I've no idea how suburban the people around here are. Are they? Terribly. The Eversheds have always gone to bed at 11, so they expect me to be in at 11. Oh, very unreasonable of them. Mm -hmm. I suppose it does make a difference when you're a guest in somebody else's house. Never mind. When your family comes back next week, it'll be easier for you. <laughs> it won't. They always expect me in at 10.30. Surely you're old enough to decide these things for yourself. Well, that's the trouble with parents. They never think you're old enough to do anything. They still think I'm in short pants. Really, they do. <laughs> Peter? Hmm? How would you like to go away for the weekend? With, with you? Um, yes, in a way. What <laughs> sort of way? Well, I have some friends who have a houseboat up the river and they've asked me for the weekend. I'm sure they'd love me to bring you. Well... I've got to go to work on Saturday morning. Never mind. Drive up in the afternoon. Leave the car at Sturgeon's Lock and I'll meet you. Well, sure it'll be all right. With your friends, I mean. Positive. They'll love you. Almost as much as I do. Oh, boy. You're improving. Am I? What are you doing here this time of night? I might ask you that. What? Well, I'll drive you home. If you can spare the time. Uh, Got a handkerchief? Yes. Then use it. What for? Her lipstick. Oh, dear, I... Oh, Pepper, look, there's, there's something I want to tell you. Yes? Well, I've... It, it, it... Shall I start her up and I'll tell you on the way home? Oh, don't bother. There's nothing left to say. Goodbye. Pepper! Pepper! Oh, women! Hello. Hello, Pepper. A ham sandwich and a cup of coffee, please. I thought you'd gone on the cruise. No, I decided to stay at home. Didn't Peter tell you? Well, I haven't been seeing much of Peter lately. Well, it's like that, is it? Thank you. I'm sorry. So Peter never did have much sense. I'm much better off without him anyway. That's what I keep telling myself. Men are more trouble than they're worth. That's just what I say. They're all selfish. And deceitful. And untrustworthy. And fickle. And hateful. I thought you were engaged. I was. Broken it off? Well, I bet you did the wisest thing. That's what I keep telling myself. Bet he's sorry now. I doubt it. He's too swollen headed. I bet you don't care anyway. I should say not. Nor do I. I can take care of myself. It's you. Hello!
tell you before that the others aren't coming. Hmm. What? I had a message just before you arrived. Do you mind? <laughs> no, but if you don't. I think it'll be rather cozy having the place to ourselves. Don't you? Hmm. Cozy. No ever sheds to insist on you going to bed at 11. No. In fact, no one to insist on you going to bed at all. <laughs> no. Unless you want to. again? I can't think what was the matter with me. I'm not usually like that, I promise you. Don't you really know what was the matter with you? No. Do you? Yes. It's being engaged. But Michael, I simply love being engaged. Don't you? No, if you ask me, I think we've got the prospect of three dreary months in front of us. What a beastly thing to say. Well, you ask anyone you know if they enjoyed their engagement. The answer, if it's honest, will be no. Don't you want to be engaged to me? No, not in the least. Michael. I want to be married to you. One has to be engaged first. I don't see why. There's no parallel state in nature. Animals don't get engaged. I mean, I've... I've scanned the pages of the Times for years, but I've never yet seen them announce the betrothal of a stoat or a snail. What do you mean? Well... A buck ant, for instance. He doesn't prance up to a lady ant and ask her to walk out with him. They don't waste time walking out, they just get on with it. Get on with what? This. You see, darling, being engaged is an unnatural state. One's licensed to go so far and no farther. That's what's getting on our nerves. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like driving a car with the accelerator and the brake on at once. Something's bound to seize up in the end. Don't you see, my puppet? Yes, I think perhaps I do. But there's nothing to be done about it, is there? Isn't there? You mean... Just as much as you want me to mean, darling, and no more. Joan, I don't want to urge you to do this if you're going to be sorry afterwards. I can't imagine myself being sorry. I love hearing music over the water. Don't you? <laughs> Must be quite some party they're having over there. Do you wish you were there? Of course not. Isn't it rather dull for you here with only me for company? What do you think? I think I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> I think I am too. You know, I'm very, very fond of you. I think you Turn on the light, darling. Where is it? Just on the right. Allow me. Who are you? Peter. Leave this to me, darling. Now, look here, sir. What are you doing on this boat? I happen to own it. Oh, oh then I apologize. Uh, you must be phased, um, uh... If it's of any interest to you, I happen to be her husband. Oh. Her husband? Gerald, this has gone far enough. Has it? Now, that's just what I wanted to know. You see, Mr... Uh, Rob Robinson. Robinson? That's original. Most people choose Smith. 
Well, Mr. Robinson, does the word correspondent mean anything to you? Yes, but I... I... Well, then there's no need to say any more, surely. Oh, yes, there is. Faye. Leave this to me. I'm more used to Gerald's peculiar sense of humour. It's odd, you know, but he really thinks he's going to get away with this. I don't think, darling, I know. Really? Mm -hmm. Everything? Enough. Enough for what? Enough to know that you've gone too far this time. Well, that all depends, doesn't it? I mean, Hurley's a charming place. And the Green Dragon's delightful for a quiet weekend. But surely it's too quiet for Cora Melton. What the devil do you mean? You know how Cora can't bear to be alone. Or didn't she tell you? Yes, but... You don't think you can make anything out of that, do you? I don't think, darling, I know. Well, that's very funny. Well, what about this little bit of nonsense of yours? That's going to take a bit of explaining, isn't it? Not at all. It's perfectly innocent. Ask Pete. Peter? More coffee, darling? No, thank you. I couldn't touch another drop. Sure? Yes, really, thanks. Tired, my sweet? Yes, I am a little. How about you? I am, rather. I think I'll just see to these and then go on up. Right. When you come in, will you shut the windows? Yes. What a pity we haven't got a cat. We could put him out. Yes, we could, couldn't we? Oh, Michael. Isn't it heaven to think we shan't have to say goodnight? <laughs> Shirley! Oh, it's you! I thought you were on holiday. What's the matter with you? Oh, I wish I was dead. Well, you better come along inside. Come on. Is there anything I can do? No. Nobody can't do nothing. Would you like to sit down? Oh, you are kind. Can I get you something to drink? I don't mind if I do. There's some wine here. Will it be safe, do you think? I think so. Dad always brought us up to be teetotal. Well, this'll be all right. All right? Oh, it tastes a bit funny. I suppose it couldn't have gone off, could it? I don't think wine can. <laughs> Look, would it help to tell me about it? There's nobody in the house. Joan's away for the weekend. Oh, I feel better now. It was the shock, I suppose. Shock? Hmm. Fred, you know. Oh, Fred? It's always been Fred with me. He draws me, that fellow does. Like a spider would a fly. Oh, he isn't no good, neither. No principles, and yet he's only got to touch me and I simply turn to water. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I do. Of course, I had to hide it from Dad. He says Fred's no good. And no more he isn't. He tried to come it over me, Mr. Peter. Come it over you? Yes. You know. Oh. And when I said no, he said the most dreadful things. He said, who did I think I was and what was women made for? And he fought with me. He tried to strangle me. Weren't you frightened, Shirley? Oh, my legs felt like knitting. Give me a terrible shock. I ran nearly all the way here, shaking like a jelloid. Yes, quite right, too. Oh, but was it, Mr. Peter? That's what I keep wondering. Here we are, all shoved into the world together, Fred said. Oh, very reasonably spoke, really. I will say that for him. Have you ever known Esther see my girl, Fred said? Well, of course, I had to say I never had. Beyond being given a penny for an ice cream corner when I was a kid. Oh, it, it sounded all right when he talked, but, but not after. Well, how could it? I said that, but he said, what could people like us do? We can't afford to go away for weekends. No. You've got to take your fun where you can get it. Or go without, Fred said. Shirley, do you wish you'd taken it? do in a way and, and yet I couldn't at the time it frightened me but I kept wondering all the way here if I'd thrown away my only chance don't you believe it Shirley there'll be a lot more chances much better ones I say it must be awfully late look can I drive you home oh I daresn't go home Mr Peter 
Why not? Well, I told you, Dad let off at me something chronic for going out with Fred tonight. She said if I ever went out with him again, I could something will stop out. Oh, he's very respectable, you know, Dad is, when he's roused. He turned me out in the street as soon as look at me. Well, why don't you stay here in your own room? You don't want to be frightened about being in an empty house. I've got to stay here now. It's too late to go to the Evershit. Oh, thank you, Mr. Peter. I think I will. <laughs> Seems funny, doesn't it, us being here talking all by ourselves? <laughs> well, we wouldn't be if this weekend hadn't turned out a washout for me, too. Why are you sopping with? Fancy me going on talking like that and you catching your death a cold. Whatever happened to you? Oh, it's nothing. It's just the end of the washout. See, this weekend didn't work out for either of us, did it? Well, I'd better get out these wet things. You better had. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Peter. Thanks. Ever so. Good night, Shirley. You know, I'm awfully glad nothing happens. To you, I mean. I feel the same about you, Shirley. Good night. Good night. Give me a hand. I can't get your geezer to work. Aren't you helpless? Well, I did everything you told me. What happened? There was a green flash, and I didn't like the look of it. it does that from time to time. Well, it's good to be home again, isn't it, Mother? Does it look funny? I wonder if they were on the clock up. Oh, Mother, it's stopped. Has it, dear? Now, that's the first time that clock has stopped since my dear old governor had it. I really do think they might have... I'll bet I know what's happened. Now, if that strike's wrong, it's all up. I'm going to put it on at three o'clock. If it doesn't strike three, I wash my hands of it, Mother. Now, Charles. Sir, did you hear that? I mean, as it was while going away at all, I think like that happens. Don't you think, dear, that we ought to tell people that we haven't been on the cruise? What? And let Wilson make me the laughing stock of the 840? Don't bloom in fear. Besides, we're going to waste all that guidebook stuff we learned, are we? I mean, take Athens, for instance. Like many other famous cities, such as Naples or Constantinople, Athens is best approached by sea. As the steamer rounds oh, the please, eastern Charles, end of Salamis... Oh, please, Charles, not again. And don't bring it up unless they do. I only hope I'll remember everything. Oh, it'll be all right. Now, you stick to your own three towns that you learned, and I'll stick to my three. What's that? What's what? I thought I heard someone moving about upstairs. Now, Mother, who could possibly be upstairs? I don't know. I thought I heard something. You're not nervous, are you? Will you, dear? Why, of course not. Silly. Hello there! Anybody there? Who's there? It's somebody. Daddy! Mummy, what on earth are you doing here? I, well, we, uh, oh, you explain, Charles. I should think so. You were positively creeping about the place. Oh, no, not creeping. Was I, Father? No, no, of course not. You see, dear, we, um, well, uh, we thought we were alone in the house. That won't do, Daddy. People don't creep when they think there's nobody to hear them. And what are you doing here at all? The ship didn't get you back till Monday, I thought. Well, if you must know, we've been to Bognor. But we've had postcards from you, from Lisbon. <laughs> well, 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 as a matter of fact, I asked the purser to get them sent off. And you never said a word to anyone. Daddy, how deceitful. And to top that, you come home late at night and snoop. No, 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 Joni, not snoop. Well, what else do you call it? Don't you trust us? Oh, Joni, Joni, of course we do. Don't say such horrible things. I haven't forgotten your horrid remarks about empty houses. Well, now you have got something to whisper about. Michael? Is Michael here, dear? Yes, he is. He's having a bath and he's staying the night. I think what you like about that. Yes, darling? Oh, hello. How are you, Mrs. Robinson? How are you, sir? Well, 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 this is an unexpected pleasure. Did you, uh, did you have a good trip? Well, as a matter of fact, we didn't go to the Mediterranean. Didn't go? No, they've been lurking and skulking in Bognor. Oh, June. 
I cannot allow you to use such words in connection with your dear mother. Well, um, uh, won't you come in? Thank you, sir. Uh, after uh, you. Oh, no. No, please, oh, please, oh, I insist. Oh, no, go on, please. Well, I hope you found all that you expected to find in the empty house you talked so much about. Well, I think, Joni, in the circumstances, it's a good thing we did come back. There you go. Thinking the worst as usual. Well, if you really want to know... I thought the good Lord the house is full of people. Peter! What on earth are you doing here? Oh, Joni, you naughty girl. You did give me a start. What are you talking about? Well, dear, Joni didn't tell us that you were here. She let us think that she and Michael were here alone. Just to frighten us. Joni, darling, I do apologize. I should have known that you'd never do anything like that. <coughs> have a cigarette. Come in. Here we are. Now then, you're sure you don't mind sleeping down here? No, not at all, sir. I mean, I'm sure Peter wouldn't mind you having his room. No, I seem to put everybody out quite enough for one evening. Oh, well, uh, make yourself at home, my boy. I mean, ask for anything you want. Thank you. Yes. Oh, um, well, there's just one thing. I, I hope you won't take it the wrong way, but, well, perhaps I'm over particular about these things. But you won't interfere with the clock. Clock? Yes, on the metalpiece. Well, no, why should I? Oh, I don't know. I, I just thought you might like to amuse yourself with it in the night. Anyway, good night. Good night. Wonder if you were warm enough. Oh. Yes, thanks very much. I should go to bed if I were you. Oh, Michael. Don't be horrid. It wasn't my fault. Well, I didn't say it was. Don't you realize I feel as badly as you do about it? Oh, I should think it's probably a very good thing, very wise, very prudent of your parents to come back in the middle of the night. Michael, you don't think they did it on purpose? Well, darling, I'm not quite a fool. Why else should they do such a thing? How dare you think that of Mummy and Daddy? Such a thought had never entered their simple minds. Beastly of you. Well, I am beastly. Good night. Oh. oh, Michael, don't you let me down. It's too much. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. I know I'm being unreasonable, but <clears throat> I'm not in a very good mood. Look, stay and talk me into a good temper. Dare I? Well, just for a few minutes. Ooh. You're shivering. Have my rug. No, you want that. No, but you... you I know. I'll get the dust sheet. What? Here's an enormous parcel addressed to us. Oh, do let's open it. Well, it'll do tomorrow, won't it? I know what it is. It's Aunt Edith's present. Yes, darling, I'm not much interested in Aunt Edith's present at the moment. Do come back. <laughs> I needn't bother to open it now, anyway. Because I know what it is. It's a canteen of plate. That'll be nice, won't it? <clears throat> Will it? Mm. Well, of course, silly. Can't live without knives and forks. Oh, yeah. Live without Aunt Edith's? <laughs> As a matter of fact, my mother's going to give us some of the family silver, so we shan't need Aunt Edith's present at all. Oh dear, it's going to be very awkward. Don't you remember I told you about a fortnight ago that Aunt Edith was sure to give us a canteen of plate? Did you? 
I can't remember. Anyhow, you can easily ask her to get something else, can't you? Mm. Darling, I couldn't possibly. Aunt Edith always gives a canteen of plate. Oh, darling, how silly. I mean, it wouldn't hurt her to change it, shall it? Afraid it would. You see, she always gives a canteen of plate. Would your mother mind terribly if she changed her present? Oh, she, can, she can hardly do that, my sweet. You see, she hasn't gone to a shop and bought an ordinary canteen of knives and forks. This is some of our family silver. Belonged to my grandmother. I mean, silver, darling, not plate. <laughs> I see. So you want me to throw poor Aunt Edith's gift back in her face? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Joan. In any case, I thought you didn't like Aunt Edith. You're always making fun of her. She's tiresome, I know. She's been very good to us. She's paying for half my truce, sir. I don't see how I can possibly ask her to change her present. It isn't as if she didn't always, always give a canteen a plate. say that again, Joan? It's raving mad. You lose a sense of proportion over Aunt Edith. Like your mother. How dare you say I'm like Mummy? And in any case, how could I be like anyone better? She's been a marvellous mother to us. Yes, I know she has. Perhaps you'd rather I was like your mother. That was quite unnecessary. I know we're not county, but sometimes when I see other people's manners, I'm tempted to feel very glad we aren't. Oh, Michael, I'm too tired to quarrel. And I'm too tired to stop. What do you mean by that last remark of yours? I know quite well your people think you're too good for me. What absolute rot! No, it isn't. It was perfectly obvious when you took me home, on approval. Your mother was, well, she was patronising. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't. She was? I've never said so before, but it was obvious that she thought your engagement to me most unfortunate. I know Daddy's always had to work for his living, but I don't think that's anything against him. What did I ever say it was? No, but your mother looked at you. Stop criticizing my mother. Well, you said things about mine. Yeah, you're absolutely impossible. So you really are. You're extraordinary creature. Oh, I hate people who always get hurt over trivial things. So petty-minded. Who's petty-minded? You are, just over a canteen of plate. Silver. There you are. That's typical. And your mother didn't even have to buy her present. Just the most stuff she had by her. Well, as poor Aunt Edith, who hasn't a large income, has spent quite ten pounds. What a regrettably commercial way of looking at it. Yes, that's natural. We are commercial. We're very ordinary middle-class people. And if you feel it too demeaning to marry one of our class, now is the time to I'm say I'm beginning so. to have grave doubts about marrying anyone with such a temper. Very well. Here's your ring. I don't want it. Well, I'm sure I don't. Joan, be careful. I mean it. Go back and tell your mother you've broken off your unfortunate engagement. And tell her to find you someone who doesn't come from a suburban family and who always worked for their own living and paid their way. Have you quite finished? Because if so, may I remind you that this is my bedroom? Heaven forbid that I should ever trespass there. Good night. Good night. Blast. Blast. Blast.
Michael? Somewhere where I can't be disturbed. Father, thank goodness you've come. Oh, what's the matter? The Wilsons are here, and I know they want to ask us about the cruise. Well, that's all right. Now you know your part. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. I'm not sure. I think so. Well, now you stick to your own three towns. Gibraltar, Tunis, Naples. Gibraltar, Tunis, Naples. Yes, and I'll bring the conversation round to Athens. They've never been there. Oh, I feel so wicked telling all these lies. But, Ducky, it isn't lies. It's the truth. It's all in the guidebook. Besides, if we all spoke the truth all the time, where would any of us be? Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. Hello, 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 Mrs. Wilson. Have a nice trip. Oh, splendid. Most beneficial. Still, it's nice to be back on terracotta again. <clears throat> uh, where did you land? Where did we land? Um, oh, oh, do sit down, do sit down. Yes, uh, when did you say you landed? Uh, when did we land, Mother? It was seven. Uh, we, uh, I thought you weren't uh, coming back till tomorrow morning. Well, as a matter of fact, we, uh, we got back rather earlier than we thought. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it was downhill coming back, eh? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, old fellow, I, I must show you my begonia. Oh, you can't teach me anything about begonias, old man. <laughs> what were your impressions of Lisbon? Lisbon? Oh, um, um uh, a, a neat little town. It's got a sort of... Um, uh, where did you get my postcard? No. Oh, it was all on there. Oh, yes. Oh, what did you think of Jim? Jim? Gibraltar. Oh, yes, Gibraltar. Of course, Gibraltar. Your town. Gibraltar. Uh, the streets of... Uh, <laughs> it's so nice of you to come round. Uh, we were longing to hear about the voyage. Oh, uh, the voyage, yes. Oh, it was lovely. Uh, what with the deck games and the bridge and... Uh, uh, and the ping pong. And the ping pong. It all passed like a dream. What did you think of Naples? Oh, I don't remember going to Naples. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, um, I get so muddled. Uh, that is the place with a very nice post office. Uh, yes, and the, uh, and the volcano. Yes, uh, it smoked. <laughs> I know, we've been there. Oh, by the way, um, you two have never been to Athens, have you? No. Oh, I must tell you about Athens. But I want to hear what you did on board. Did you play any games? Yes. No, uh, no I mean... Uh, yes. <laughs> well, a father did and I didn't. Getting a gale, dog. Renewing his youth, eh? <laughs> oh, nothing very strenuous, you know. Just an odd rubber or so, a bridge and a game or so, billiards. Billiards? Oh, yes, I, I'm rather partial to a game of billiards. I never knew they played billiards on board ship. How do they keep the table steady? Well, it was sort of, sort of swung, you know. <laughs> I suppose they play with square balls, eh? <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. Robinson, really. Isn't it dreadful? I never know what he'll say next. Well, I don't know myself sometimes. No, but I really must tell you about Athens. <clears throat> like many other famous cities, such as Naples or Constantinople, me, Athens is best approached by sea. Me, as the steamer rounds the eastern end of Salamis, the traveller has a wonderful parabola before him. Uh, Directly in front lies Pyra. Uh, there's a Mrs. Fripp, sir, on the phone from Bogner. She says Mrs. Robinson left her latchkey behind. Bogner? 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 Bother. <laughs> My begonia! Oh, Miss Joan, I found this in the lounge this morning. The ring, isn't it? Yes. You must be ever so excited about the wedding. There isn't going to be any wedding. Been having words? Yes. I thought so at breakfast. Oh, don't you take no notice. The insults I've had to stomach from Fred, you'd hardly credit. But as Mum says to me, you keep your mouth shut till you've got him safe. Think of all the years you'll have to get your own back. Oh, don't you take no notice. They don't mean one half, they say. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, Daddy. Michael's been so beastly. Oh, surely not. Yes, he has. He said I was bad-tempered. Were you? Certainly not. Perfectly reasonable. He was impossible. Oh, I don't suppose he meant to be my ducky. What was it all about? I can't remember how it started, but got onto Aunt Edith's canteen. He wanted her to change it. Well, I think that's rather unreasonable. But you should explain to him, my sweetie, that Aunt Edith always gives a canteen a plate. 
I merely suggested that she might ask her Aunt Edith if she'd mind changing the present she'd very kindly bought us because it was something we'd got already, you see. Well, that seems quite reasonable to me. No sense in having two of everything, is there? No, it's exactly what I should have thought. Then he got furious and said I was like Mummy. Well, let's not be angry about surely. It is when he meant it as an insult. An insult? But to say that you're like your dear mother, the young puppy. Then she made the wildest accusations about my mother. Oh, no. Yes, and my mother really isn't a snob, Mrs. Robinson. I'm sure she isn't. It strikes me, my dear, that your young man is just a wee bit of a snob. He's not a snob, Daddy. Oh, you don't understand. I understand that he's upset you, my ducky, and made you cry. And that's a poor start for a life's partnership. Do you know, Johnny, I've never been really happy about this engagement. I was saying to Mother only this morning, Joan's looking a bit peaky, I said. I doubt if she got hold of Mr. Wright after all. Why will people keep interfering in engagements? Michael and I have been left alone. We might have made a go of it. As it is, my life's simply ruined. I'd better go upstairs before I begin to cry. Oh, Joanie. Charles! Where's Joan? I thought she was with you. She's gone to her room, poor little thing. I'd like to give that chap a piece of my mane. Michael? Yes. Well, I've just been talking to him. And from what he tells me, I, I really think Joan went a little bit too far. Well, I'm afraid I don't agree with you. Well, dear, she did say some rather sharp things about his mother. Oh, he's been getting round you, has he? Oh, no, no, not at all. But I really think that Joan was extremely rude. And I don't wonder. <laughs> of course, I know. An engagement is a trying time. Yes, today knew it. Three years I had of it, too. Charles, what do you mean? Well, I never mentioned it before, my dear. But I used to feel sometimes that if your father didn't buy himself another set of false teeth, I wouldn't be able to bear another meal in this house. What a horrid thing to say about my dear old father. I'm merely remarking that he ought to have had another set of false teeth. So he ought. Now look here, Mother, we don't want to... Oh. Who is it that keeps changing these pictures around? Is some sort of game or what? That's poor father. I wonder you dare look him in the face after the things you've just said. Huh. I once saw him try to eat an apple. That very nearly finished me. Oh, why can't you let the poor man rest in his grave? I mean, why couldn't you stuck to bananas? Well, if it comes to that, our engagement nearly came to an end because of your sisters. And what was wrong with my sisters, may I ask? My mother didn't approve of the way your sister Annie used to go for moonlight bicycle rides with those Ferguson boys. But what business was it of your mother's what my sister Annie did? You may not know it, but it was the talk of the place. Huh. I should have thought your family was in a position to talk. And if it comes to that, what about your Aunt Louisa, that cross-eyed piano tuner? Really, Charles? I've been married for nearly 25 years, and this is the first time I've had to put up with insults from you. Please, and could I have the afternoon off? Of course, Shirley, if you want to. I don't want to, only Fred's asked me, and I never can resist him, and now it'll start all over again. You know, Mother, I'm surprised at you, taking a stranger's part against your own daughter. Would you mind moving, Charles? You're sitting right on my ball of wool. Thank you. I mean, if you'd only seen how upset the poor little thing was. Would you mind not standing right in my light? Oh, very well. Oh, don't shout, Charles. I've got a headache. I'm not shouting. I think I'll go and turn up the cupboard under the stairs. Yes, I should if I were you. Oh, dash. Oh, there's that damn dog again. I, uh, just wondered if there's a Sunday paper, sir. Thank you. Oh, nothing new, I see. <laughs> Not much news. No. Oh, I see Surrey made 530. Oh? Ah, oh, this is more in my line. When's your birthday, sir? Second of August, why? Oh, well, then you're under Venus. Under who? I say, sir, this is your lucky day. Yeah? Especially in domestic affairs. Ah, 
I see there's a girl roller skating from London to Salisbury. Oh? Hmm, she was bitten by a goat in Andover and had to give up. What was she doing in Andover? Being bitten by a goat. But you no business to be going to Andover at all. Oh, I don't know, sir. Yeah, but I do when she was males out of her way, males. Was she? Of course she was. Look here, I'll show you. There's London. There's Salisbury. Well, there's Andover right bang clean out of her way. Well, because I was thinking that Andover was just a little bit farther down this way, because... Daddy, you wanted on the telephone. Oh. 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 <coughs> and then he said that he was going to divorce her and cite me as a co-respondent. And after that, I fell in the river. You mean he pushed you in? No, I fell in. How? I was swimming ashore. You ran away? Not exactly. And left her at the mercy of that awful man. He was at her mercy, too. Oh. What do you think I ought to do now? What did your father say? Oh, I haven't told him. He wouldn't understand, not like you do. Well, there's only one thing to do. What? You must go and see him and face it out. But go and see her husband? Yes. Oh, I couldn't do that. Why not? I just couldn't. Look, you... You haven't done anything to be ashamed of, have you? I don't know. Nothing that he could get a divorce for, I mean. Don't think so. No. But he doesn't know that. I suppose not. Well, there you are. You must go to him like a man and say, Mr. Jones, I realize that I've caused you pain and suffering and acted like a cad. Cad? A cad. But thank goodness you came in time. Oh, I couldn't say that. Why not? Well, I feel so silly. Well, you should have thought of that before. No, I can't. Do you want your parents to know? Do you want to be arrested? Oh, no. Then come on. All right, we'll go, but I won't be able to say it. Mr. Jones, I realize I have caused you pain and suffering and acted like a... A cad. Oh. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I, uh, uh, We want to see Mr. Jones, please. Uh, yes, madam. Will you come inside, please? I'm going. Oh, no. You're going to see it through now. Mr. Robinson and the young lady. Dad, what are you doing here? You may well ask. You wanted to see me? Well, yes, but not just now. I'll, I'll, can I come again later? I'm afraid not. I should be leaving in half an hour. What is it you wanted? Well, m my business was rather private. It's no good beating about the bush, my boy. Mr. Jones has told me everything. Everything? He thought it right that I should know. We've had a man-to-man -man talk and decided what steps should be taken. Isn't that so, Mr. Jones? That's right. Yes, but you can't do that. Why not? Well, I, I don't want to marry her. Who said anything about marriage? Well, if it's going to be a divorce, I'll have to. Who said anything about a divorce? You did last night. Well, forget it. There isn't going to be one. Yes. Well, then I won't have to be a cor... There isn't going to be any. No. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Jones. I realize I've caused you a lot of pain and suffering and I... <laughs> well, you thank your father. He persuaded me. Thank you, Dad. I... Well, I, I think we'd better be going. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Uh, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd better be going. Yes, I shouldn't advise you to stay to lunch. It won't be up to your standard. It'll be out of tins. I, uh, I don't suppose we shall meet again for some time. Oh. No, I, I've been thinking things out during the night. My uncle's firm offered me a job abroad. Of course, I refused when I thought I was getting married, but now I think I'd better take it. Where is it? I, uh, uh, I can't remember exactly where it is. <clears throat> I know it's a frightful climate. Oh? Yes. No one can stick it for more than six months at a time, I believe. Well, I'd better be going. What sort of job is it? Oh, I don't know. It's something to do with uh, copra or soya beans or something. Exporto grass. Esparto. They say it's a frightful strain in a chap living there, <coughs> wherever it is. Your teeth fall out in handfuls, I believe. Hardly could they when you've only got 32. I see there's a girl roller skated from London to Salisbury. For heaven's sake, stop reading that damn paper. Oh, Joe. Oh, my God. I can't bear this any longer. Neither can I. Let's stop being beastly to one another, shall we? Such a waste of time. Look, so's being engaged. Let's stop that, too. You mean get married? Yes, right away. Want to? Of course. Oh, darling, I thought my life was ruined all over a silly canteen of plate. Silver. Now, Michael. Joan, we must settle this cutlery question once and for all. I know. 
We lose Aunt Edith's canteen on ordinary nights when Daddy and Mummy come to supper. But when your mother comes to dinner, we'll use the silver. You little so and Come here, sir. Come here, sir. Come here. 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 Come here